Am I making any sense? <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't typically use Zoom. Uh, we use uh, Skype for business, so that's yep. what I'm more familiar with. Yeah. So, still, still figuring out the kind of the all the tools and the user interface here. But this, yeah, uh, yeah this looks like a, a software review that we're about to begin. <laughs> It is. It's totally a software <laughs> review. No, I use Skype for business too. I use. Okay, yeah. I used to use WebEx at one point, and I used yeah. to use. Uh, I've used them all. I, yeah. You know, I've been in tech for twenty five years now, and it's like whatever the best deal is at the moment. But what's interesting yeah. about Zoom is when comics decided to start doing their virtual open mics, they yeah. all started using Zoom. Yeah. Um, which I don't know why it went this direction. It's probably pricing. I would imagine okay. it's a pricing thing. But you still have to pay for something because I, I haven't really used it much, but you, you still have to pay for something, right? If you want to host. Like, yeah. So right now I have, a, this is a free account. So I heard this will cut off after 40 minutes. I think I went longer in my oh, okay. both the pri uh, previous ones, but I don't know. We'll see. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to jump into paying for it just yet. Yeah. So yeah, any heard anything in the news lately? <laughs> Any good? Uh, I just came out of a coma, so I, maybe you could fill me in about what's going uh, on. Well, yeah, it's Have hard to find open mics. These? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Have you done a bunch of these pandemic podcasts? or is This will be my third. This is your third, okay. Yeah. And was there a shelter in place present when last time yeah. you did? Yeah, okay. so my first one on Monday, last Monday, was, um, well, I was going to... I was going to tell, it was with Jacob and I, I was going to tell yeah. him we should do it over Zoom anyway, because I've had basically a month of sick kids oh, and I no. go, you know what? I don't want you to come over to my house and then, especially with all the uh, like scare that was going on. But this is, we were having this conversation over the weekend yeah. and then Monday rolled around and it was like, that's when Gavin Newsom was like, no, yeah, no, no, yeah. that wasn't Gavin Newsom. That was um, six counties was, in the Bay area. Yeah. I think it was like six health officials in yeah. San Francisco County, Santa Clara, Marin, right. and some other places that, but yeah, I had just come back from vacation Oof. the following weekend and I was going to go into work because my workplace was being irresponsible and, yes. you know, there's no, from my workplace, there's really no like work from home because we're like, uh, we're a production facility. So it's all it. based on like lab work and stuff. Yeah. So, they, you know, obviously didn't want to turn off the lights. So they were yeah. trying to prolong it as much as possible until the county was like, no, this everyone's got to stop. And, and I thought, I thought it would be, uh, make your best effort. But no, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the sheriff was tweeting at, uh, <laughs> what's his name? Um, it was Tesla. Yeah, it was tweet, tweeting at uh, Elon Musk. Musk saying, no, yeah. dude, this, this applies <laughs> to you also. Yeah. And now I guess the National Guard's going to get involved in in yeah. California at least. So I think everyone's you really got to take it serious now that you just yeah, can't think, go uh, out. Yeah, soon we'll need our papers to go to Safeway. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Where are your travel papers? Yeah. Oh, that is such an eerie thought. Going full Germany. Oh no, yeah. that's crazy. So yeah, if you're a conspiracy guy. Yeah. If you're a conspiracy guy, this is exactly what you've been expecting. The Alex Jones of yeah. the world are like, this is their excuse. They're yeah. going to shut down everything. We're now in martial law. You know? Yeah, the <laughs> potato seeds they purchased are yes. not looking so stupid now and crazy. Oh man, the, the preppers. The interesting thing about like a policy that you have to enact during a health crisis and when you're taking over like a country are like pretty much identical. So identical yeah yeah and i don't know i talked about this in in the podcast i had last week but you know obviously i'm not uh i'm not the guy to be strategizing about how to how to combat a, a virus but like yeah. really there's not much you can do other than yeah. just stop just everyone yeah, stop, stop everything <laughs> yeah and don't go which is interesting because you know, the climate change, all the people, the major climate change scientists kind of say the same thing. Mm -hmm. The only way to make climate change, not even stop, but just kind of like taper is to yeah. just stop. 
but but not yeah. just stop like what we're doing going out like I yeah. shouldn't even have lights on right now. That's how right. much we have yeah, to stop yeah. for climate change. No, no airplanes, no, no driving anywhere, no coal factories. And, Just your bicycle. Yeah. yeah, well, what I've heard about this whole like quarantine thing is that it's probably going to happen in stages. Like we're, mm. we'll be able to go back out at some point, like, you know, for non-essential work and stuff. Yeah. But then like five months from now, they'll be like, okay, back to shelter in place. Which makes me go like, then I guess it's just to keep us from going stir crazy at some point because there's really no way well, to like completely extinguish. I I mean, I the, the reason, so I don't have anything better, but the reason I'm a little suspicious of this shelter in place is, okay, so we basically tanks just- rolling down your street. What's that? The tanks rolling down your street. Oh yeah, that, yeah, the tanks rolling down. Is why you're suspicious? Well, yeah, there's that part. But then the other thing is, if you think about our immune systems, yeah, like the way you make immune systems robust is you're out there and it's, okay. it's, you're exposed to all kinds of, like on any yeah. given night at Woodham's, how many different yeah. infections was our immune system like? Uh, okay, I got to fight. And you're just this. talking about the comics. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just mutant infections walking around. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's all <laughs> kinds of stuff. And your immune system is just too, like working out, right? So yeah, if we're yeah. all separated from each other for yeah. two months, does that mean our immune system now is weaker and then we're going back in with this weird virus out there? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not a disease, infectious disease yeah. specialist, but I like to pretend that I am on Facebook yeah. and Twitter. Yes. Um, but, uh, you know, like if this is a virus, just like the common cold is, like mm. that mutates every year. So, yeah. you know, what's to say this this particular coronavirus strain isn't going to mutate next year. And then yeah. even if they have a vaccine, I mean, I don't know. It's uh, it's looking kind of dire out here. <laughs> oh, I mean, we'll, no. we'll just be living a different kind of lifestyle. I think, I think that's it. Here on out. Yeah. I think that's it. Which, so since this is a podcast with stand-up comics, what is your... <laughs> What what is your take? Do you think it's going to come back strong, or do you think it's going to kind of peter? You're talking about stand-up comedy. I'm talking about our open mic scene, like when things oh, when the man. doors open again. What do you think it's going to look like? Uh, I, I think it's a lot of uh, it's going to look like a bunch of open micers trying it again for the first time. Like, oh yeah, it's, it, there's I think uh, obviously like I'm trying to write more because you know, yeah you're just stuck here. And yeah, that part makes sense, but you, you, you need some like stage, you know, kind of experience and like there's a huge amount of like rhythm and practice and oh, like dude. muscle memory to it that yeah. I think everyone is losing regardless of whether you're doing these Zoom mics because that's yeah. like doing like a funny conference call, I think. Like it's basically yeah. like, yes. all right, it's your turn. You, you know, what are you presenting on? And yeah. everyone does their jokes and, you know, it's a completely different tension and yeah atmosphere to an open mic or to a comedy showcase so yeah i think it's it's going to be a lot of retraining i'm sure all the people who've been doing it for years it'll be you know, yeah they'll get back to it quickly but i think at least for me speaking for myself i think it's going to take a while back to get back in the rhythm of i uh, yeah, I'm in that same boat where I, I'm going to do a couple of these Zoom things yeah. just to get just because I want to say hi to everyone and see everyone. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I I almost feel like this is a little bit defeatist on my end, but I almost feel like this is just I'm on a vacation. I'm on a a forced vacation when it comes yeah. to comedy. And so in that scenario, really, all I can do is think about what's funny to me and right, write it yeah. down and maybe it's a premise that can work later on when we, like every day i think of some something that i go about the, just the situation we're in right yeah i go oh i really want to try this joke out in front of yeah. people but not even not even on not on a zoom because the concepts yeah. i'm thinking is like i need people in the room to make yeah. to to make these jokes yeah um, are all your jokes corona related because that's what i've been finding oh yeah like struggling is to go outside of you know the topical like it's it, it's it all, all encompassing in life it, it's know, yeah if it it's not i'm even if it's not outright me saying coronavirus 
It's me yeah. talking about the bleakness or about disease or about death or, or something that's just yeah. funny to me or about media or government, all these things. Right. But it all is circular. Yeah. It's, it's all around this virus that's got us yeah. basically shut down. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, you know, all my takes are about like, you know, if it's the way that we're handling like grocery shopping, if it's a grocery shopping joke, it's all mm -hmm. in the context of what's going on. Or if it's, you know, raising your kids, I'm sure you have jokes about Dude. What it's like, you know, raising them in a pandemic and it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. No, no I'm, we're, we're, we're homeschooling our kids. So it's, okay. it's literally yeah. like, I'll just go from, you know, emails or whatever I'm doing at, for work now, which is, you know, even work, even the work from home people, it's like yeah. everything is kind of just grinding to a halt, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah. And in between that, you got to make sure they're doing their worksheets, read, uh, yeah. help them with problems. So, I mean, I like it. I, I, yeah, I like yeah. teaching. I don't actually kids. mind the pandemic. It's been, it's been good staying at home and getting more sleep and oh my God, you know, not stuck in traffic. You know, it's just, this pandemic can go on for a little bit, you know, dude, think about this. If it weren't for the fact that we'll run out of money at some point. Yeah. yeah. This is actually a really nice reset. But yeah. my only concern is like when it comes to the economy, because ultimately I think the virus could do a lot of damage, but shutting your mm -hmm. economy down for two months can cause yeah. more. Da I would argue more damage yeah. than let's say a five to 7% loss of earth's population. Right. Yeah, like yeah. We just changed the paradigm and we just said, Oh, you know what? Um, yeah. Let's just shut up, shut down all commerce for the next two months. Yeah. Not it's realizing, really oh, commerce is the blood of yeah. every society across the globe. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just yeah, done. I mean, yeah. You need to, you know, people go to restaurants, movie theaters, all these things. And the, the money from that pays the paychecks of the people who work yes. there. And then they spend it in these other places. And yep. it's, it's all intertwined. And once you start shutting down them, like yeah. from one level up, up, it's hard to reset, you know, I think yeah. fortunate for us, you and I are probably still receiving a paycheck. And, yeah, we are. But, you know, it, there's really nowhere for us to spend it. If, no. You know, there's a few restaurants maybe doing takeout and all these types of things, but yeah. it's, some of these businesses are going to go under. Cause well, that's why I was asking your opinion about the open mic scene, because I, I think yeah. bars are actually the most at risk yes, because... Yeah. Um, Number one, I, I, and I, again, I don't know anything about anything, but I would imagine it's a very cash-based business, which means yes, they yeah. probably don't have a lot of money to pay rent month after yeah. month without cash coming in. Yeah. And it could be like a situation where, you know, we could lose 30% of bars yeah. here in the South Bay, maybe more. I, I mean, I don't know. And, and yeah. that could affect where we can just even go and, you know, work on right. our shit jokes. Yeah, I think to get, I do think like the actual like enthusiasm of the comics in the open mic scene are probably, it's going to come back stronger than ever. Oh, I so, agree. So, so many of us are just like, dude, I want to get back on a stage yep. at some point. Like, and just, cause you, you know, you don't really get much opportunity to talk about what's going on right now. And, uh, Nothing. you know, podcast is great, but like, it's just like, I think of it as similar to what I've heard from like after 9-11, like hmm. after 9-11 happened, people just flocked to the comedy clubs and like oh, open mics and stuff because it was just like, you want it to be in a, like some sort of sense of community and just like, you know, laugh after, you know, yeah. experiencing kind of tragedy and these types of things. So I think people are probably going to want to go out to kind of shows and all these types of things. So, yeah. It's just that a could be these venues will survive long enough to, for that to happen. Otherwise, exactly. I think kind of new bars will have to come and take their place. Yeah. We may have to have a, a like a commune bar or something that all the comedians yeah. <laughs> chip in to run. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, I hadn't thought about it. I, I do think that when everyone gets the green light to go back, things will probably snap back pretty quick because what I'm finding, even though I don't necessarily like sitting in traffic, going to the office, yeah, just being out feels way better than being in. Yeah, but but you, you know what? Choice. 
that, yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. I could, it could also be, this is something I was talking about with my wife where we're both a little bit suffering from cabin fever right now. Yeah. yeah. And I was thinking about, it and I go, well, maybe, you know how you, um, your body adapts to the environment around it. And so when you get used to, okay, I got to get the kids ready in the morning. I got to drop them off at school. I got to get to work. I got to get home. I got to drive the kids to practice. And then, you know, for me, now I'm going out to do comedy at night. Like mm -hmm. it may have been that I was in such an adrenaline rush lifestyle that yeah. actually it's not that I have cabin fever. It's that I'm actually having some kind of like, um, post -traumatic. yeah, neurological, like, like there's something going on where I'm just like, oh, I don't have to do any of this anymore. And, yeah. and it could be, that's good. And maybe yeah. it should be a situation where um, once, once it becomes the new norm, like my life might be healthier, you know, less yeah. stress. Yeah. Um, like you said, you can sleep as much sleep as, cause I'm always, I'm always exhausted. <laughs> yeah. Like before yeah. this, like there was never a day where it's like, oh yeah, I feel like I've gotten enough sleep. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Just kind of burning the candles at both ends. And then, yep. I mean, if you think about it, maybe you were spending let's say an hour and a half, you know, going to work and then an hour and a half coming back or yep. going to these mics, that's, that's three hours that you just now have that didn't exist before that's right. in your day. Yeah. And, you know, you allocate a little bit of that towards sleep and, you know, the rest of your day. And it's just, you know, you know, a few hours makes a huge difference, I think. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So are you, are you quarantined with family or? Uh, I'm living you know. with my girlfriend, so we're, we're okay. kind of shelter in place here a lot of jigsaw of, uh, jigsaw puzzles being played <laughs> uh, <laughs> just a lot of movies and uh netflix ah, shows and uh yes. just uh cracking open the the old gamecube and doing nice some, just trying to you know pass the time however we can yeah yep. going every once in a while obviously to go get groceries but trying to keep that to a minimal yeah uh, and i'm trying to I'm trying to buy food once or twice a week from restaurants around me too. Cause I know yeah, yeah. that they are in, you know, again, yeah. they're a cash type business. And if yeah, they we've been trying to do some takeout from our favorite places just to, so they're still open when we, you know, yeah. come out of this. Cause I don't, most of these restaurants I think operate on really slim margins and they just kind of, you know, they're, they're a month to month business. Yeah. And I think there's been some talk of like, I guess, pausing the, the rent the, on some of these small businesses, but I, I don't know if they'll follow through with that. And I think you have to, I'm, I mean, I'm not a landlord, so it's not affecting yeah. me, but I mean, you can't, it, you're talking about who's, who's going to backfill, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. There's no one with money right now. So yeah. uh, even, even people with money have lost money because you know, the, the yeah. stock market is like, yeah, <laughs> if you had investments, you don't anymore. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. And I so, mean, I think about like old people, you know, at least, uh, you know, there's no saving grace for them because maybe they're close to retirement or they're mm -hmm. in retirement and they look at their stock portfolio and they're like, Oh, well, at least I have my health. And then that's, that's, uh, that's in, that's at risk as well. So very much so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, if I was above 60, I would definitely be, I wouldn't be as cavalier about going, like right now, yeah. I kind of look forward, if my wife wants me to pick something up at the grocery, I'm like, I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. go, because I just want to get out. Right. Um, yeah. But if I was above 60, I would not be doing that right now. Yeah. Have you been finding it's been easy to get the things you need in the, the particular supermarkets around you? Yeah, because we're kind of just, we're really cutting back to just basic stuff, yeah. you know, like obviously toilet paper, we can't get toilet paper, but that was, yeah, yeah. that was so stupid. Why do people care about <laughs> toilet paper? Like you could literally have gotten oatmeal, rice, yeah. um, meat, all this stuff was still available, but people were rushing yeah. for the toilet paper. I'm like, what? Yeah. I don't yeah, get it. It's a, it's a weird obsession, but it's also like a, like a self-fulfilling like positive loop where people are like, I guess, I mean, I, luckily we had some amount of toilet paper before this went down. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's definitely been our like, you know, most prized item that we're looking for but <laughs> in this apocalypse that we're, Oh my we're, God. It's you know, so be hilarious. Beating people over the head in a safe way, trying to get toilet paper, but it's, it's just, I guess, 
the people at the beginning stocked up for those two weeks of toilet yes. paper and then the rest of us tried to go and then when few of us found it then we're just like okay well we just gotta stockpile on this and then it just you know it's just a downstream effect to anyone who was not panicking i think so beginning. yeah so the two companies the two companies you want to be investing in is zoom yeah and charmin yeah, that's it. All those Cotton- yeah, there you go. <laughs> those are the w- big winners of yeah. the 2020 coronavirus p- pandemic. Yeah. We'll just start printing our U.S. currency on toilet paper. Exactly. I think, yeah, I, so that was one of the jokes. But it's been done to death now <laughs> that I had yeah, about it's, how, oh, it's, it's actually more affordable to wipe my ass with a $100 bill. Yeah, yeah. There's the... the there's also different takes on that joke. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. And, but they, they're all, I, I find that most of the Corona material I have is just more like Twitter fodder than real like stand up material. Yeah. It's just, you just kind of like, okay, this is a, I'll, I'll shoot this off for this particular day before anyone gets to it. But yeah, you know, there, there's probably given the number of comedians that are in this country and open mic <laughs> comics and stuff like you could probably find yes. like 200 tweets that are near identical. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, so do you, are you big on writing jokes on Twitter? Um, it's been something I've been doing more recently just because okay. it's, you know, it, at least there's an audience there and then you can kind of, yeah. The limitations of Twitter allow you to like form it into a joke. I have a right. huge problem where I have like a premise and then I, I just sit on that forever and try yeah. to figure out what the punchlines are and what the joke is. And I like, you know, I did those roasts recently, like a few, yeah, few yeah. weeks ago. And I found the roasts are really helpful in forcing you to joke right, like write jokes, because it, it yeah. that's the whole premise of a of roast is just like write funny jokes in yes. joke format. So you have to you're forced to write like set up punch. Whereas I think like when you have a bit, you're like, well, where is, where does this even go? And I think Twitter also helps with that where you're just like, well, there's only, you know, so many characters. So you get the joke out as quickly as possible. So I think it's been helpful. And I I don't know how well my Twitter jokes would translate to stage. Well, I think, um, so I don't do jokes on Twitter, although more and more Mm -hmm. I'm considering to start writing that way because what I found is, I had a number of bits that I've been working on more or less since I started comedy. Yeah. I have a rotating like premises. Yeah. And what I found is I had to really write them down almost every time before I would go up. Right. Yeah. Like write, write out almost word for word what I want to say, like a script. It's almost like I'm writing yeah. a script. Exactly. Then what I found is the more I took it on stage, the less and less I was writing to the point yeah. where something that was this big, Six yeah. months ago, I got down to this, and like, mm-hmm. why did I have all that fat around it? And then, but then I realized, yeah. like, oh, it took that much time and that many interactions with audience, and um, yeah. even even just like, I don't do anything scientific, but in your head, you're keeping track, like, oh, that joke hit yeah. in three of my last five open mics, so that's actually I'm going in yeah. the right direction. Yeah, you, um, it's just a game of probability and odds of just like. I think so. You know, in my head, I thought 100% of this material was funny. And I wrote like, you know, a five paragraph essay. And then it turns out there's only two sentences at the beginning yes. that were actually funny. And okay, well, you know, let's carve this down to those two sentences. You, you know, yeah. you try to expand and can try, you know. And I think that's yep. the natural process of arriving at the joke. Yeah, something snappy and quick. Um, yeah. But if, you, if you're thinking about it in terms of Twitter, you have to do mm-hmm. it first try. To get yeah, that big, exactly. but then I think what you could do um, is if you get something that concise, maybe when you get to stage, it turns into you know like a two sentence joke. But maybe you could yeah. extrapolate it because there's an act out in there, or there's yeah. a spin off, or a, a tag that you couldn't fit into Twitter, and you could go back yeah. and re expand on it. Yeah. So yeah, there's you know tone and timing that is present in stage performance that you don't get in twitter that's you know yeah you you don't have any facial expressions or like you said act outs that are part of that so right 
Yeah, there's definitely more range in the, the stage performance there. Do you find yourself writing more during this? Uh, no, it's been a big problem for me. Uh, yeah. This so this last week. Um, I didn't. I mean, I I always every day. I'm I'm pretty good about doing um, like journal at least three to five pages a day, and in that yeah. will always come out a couple premises. But yeah. Like the way I would write, the way I would prepare for stand up was a little more disciplined um, than just writing in a journal, meaning I would literally, okay, here's my set tonight. And I would yeah. write it out. And it's a bullet point, like premise. Mm -hmm. And then the next bullet is the indebted bullet is the punch, premise, punch, premise, punch, right? And yeah. so it's, um, it was a very structured way of writing. And I, yeah. I didn't do that last week at all because I didn't go to any open mics. So there was, I yeah. kind of thought like, well, oh, I see. That, why, that why do I need to actually? Yeah. Like, but I found to sit down and do that. Right. So, so that, that writing is what I would consider uh, like for me, a heavy edit, a heavy edit, write. Mm -hmm. Meaning when I'm just in my journal, just like, shit comes out and it's bad. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it, it may not even make sense to 98% of the planet, but it makes sense to me. Yeah. Um, and then when I try to tell something on stage, that's when the editing process begins. And that's when I do that every time, like, let's say on a Monday, I go to Woodham's mm -hmm. and I talk about whatever. I could talk about bald dogs. Who knows, yeah. right? Go figure. Yeah. So bald dogs, this, bald that, the dogs other. Are be bald after this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We're going to be... If the textile industry shut down, we're going to be looking to dogs and cats for our jackets. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> or food supply. Or food supply. There you go. Uh, and so it'll be a situation where, okay, I went into it and I wrote this much. And then the next day when I write the set list, I'll have taken out how many words. So it's like heavily editing, which I okay. think in my limited issues. Oh, can you not hear me? 